Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. A few days ago, I put out a video talking about the, uh, you know, lamenting the fact that, that the actors hired to play our heroes these days just don't take that responsibility very seriously. And I, and I said there are some, you know, exceptions, and we talked about a, a few of them. I, I pointed out Christopher Reeve, of course, is just the one who set the gold standard for that really understood that it's, it's a responsibility. It's not just a role. You're not just stepping into a role. It's not a job. If you're going to, to take on the, the, you know, the position of, of playing one of these characters, you are part of the folklore at that point. You're, you're part of that character's conception in, in the public consciousness, and you're part of that character's role in the public consciousness. It's a mythological character. It has a role in people's individual psychologies and societies, as mythology does. So if you're going to portray that character for any certain amount of time, then you have a responsibility to not allow your, to at the very least, not allow your personal persona of you as an actor to cloud or sully, soil in any way the presentation of that character and we looked at examples that are you know people have just done horribly um you know the, the the actors today just don't do a very good job uh people were trying to say oh you know henry cavill does a great man the man compared playing superman to having sex and said he's just doing it for the money and then there's the whole thing about dating a 19 year i don't know people Anyway, he's, he's hardly <laughs> meets this criteria. People try to throw out a bunch of different examples. Some of the things you guys mentioned in the comments of that list, last video, I, I actually agreed with. You pointed out a few people, because I said there were exceptions, and I pointed out, say, Brandon Ralph, for example, you know, was a great exception. And, uh, and you guys pointed out some, uh, some others' exceptions that, that were pretty good. A number of you pointed out, you know, I talked about Christopher Reeve. A number of you mentioned George Reeves, you know, who did Superman in the, in the 50s show, and absolutely agree. And you guys talked about some other of the older actors, um, I forget right now the actor, the man's name who played Hopalong Cassidy, um, Clayton Moore, you know, from the Lone Ranger. I agree with that. I do think it's, it's a different, it's a different beast though to compare actors who played heroes back in those days to today. Not, not to negate the wonderful example that those actors set back then, but it was easier, I think, to live up to a hero back then that you might be portraying because society very much expected that of you. Again, they, they could have made poor decisions and they didn't. So they're, they're to be commended for their, their wonderful, uh, you know, taking seriously of that, that, that responsibility given to them. But it's all the more heroic, I think today for an actor to play a superhero and, and still truly live up to it because today's society expects quite the opposite. You know, the, the Hollywood culture, you know, the Twitter mobs, the Twitter brigades or whatever, they expect anybody who's remotely a, a celebrity to, to virtue signal all of these things, to, to hate on anybody who doesn't agree with them. You know, they expect you to be like a Chris Evans who will actively insult and belittle anybody who doesn't share his personal opinions and values about social issues and whatnot. That is not Captain America. That, that's a horrible, you know, and he was one of the examples that I used last time about just somebody who just refuses and is not living up to that responsibility they've been given, you know, by playing this character. All of that preamble to say that I do want to start making a few videos from time to time that do call out some of the examples, some of the, the examples of individuals who I think are really living up to the, uh, to the role of playing, playing these characters, uh, with the responsibility that they have. And I have two examples for this video. And, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll flash the, the, um, at the beginning of this video by now, you'll have already seen it, but I'll flash the time stamp if you just want to get to my, you know, talk about these characters, about these actors or whatever, because I am giving a bit of a lengthy preamble here. But I do think that, uh, as I do these videos, I might even expand it and just talk about other celebrities or individuals in the spotlight that, that I think are worthy of, of heroism. You know, it's, it might be a way to sort of expand the topic of my channel a little bit away from not necessarily just people who play superheroes, but there are a lot of musicians, for example, uh, celebrities that I, that I think um, are worthy of, of being sort of heroes in our society. So I might kind of, you know, expand this and talk about some of those as well, if the videos seem to be well received. So all that to say, let's get to our first uh, our first two subjects for these these videos. Two individuals in Hollywood that I think are certainly the exceptions to what I said before about how modern day actors, especially actors who play superheroes, just don't take that responsibility very seriously. These two are big exceptions, I think. The first one is, uh, 
is is pretty popular right now for the character and this is a, a recent story you might have already heard about it already i'll put a link down below to uh to a, a news story which has some clips or whatever i think it's from the today show i hate the today show but it's just the clip i'll use uh because it has some um some you know images for it if you can take a look at it but paul rudd paul rudd of course plays ant-man and paul rudd has been named as you know just one of the most likable guys in hollywood he's just likable on screen uh he really does seem to be genuine when you look at interviews with him he's just a likable guy he's not going to get into politics he's not going to get into anything uh you know religion or politics or something like that now, I will do the caveat. I don't necessarily follow Paul Rudd or the other individual I'm going to talk about. I don't follow all their social media accounts with a fine tooth comb. So if you might happen to find this or that post that they did or whatever, you know, I don't know about that. But I know Paul Rudd just seems like a genuine guy. He's out there doing his job. Now, he took on the role of Ant-Man. And Scott Lang's Ant-Man obviously is not Superman levels of important to our society by any means. And most most of your average people in the street didn't even know who Ant-Man was until these movies. You know, comic fans, of course, did. But the, the movies were popular, and Ant-Man is such a lovable character, you know, uh, in those. And he, th that first Ant-Man movie really spoke to me. It's one of my favorite superhero movies. And I don't mean to say that it's just one of the best-made superhero movies ever. No, I mean, as far as the film, superhero films that really speak to me and personally, that first Ant-Man film, and I liked Ant-Man and Wasp too, but that first Ant-Man film just really spoke to me because he's a single father. You know, he's a father of a, um, of a daughter. He's trying to do the best he can. Uh, you know, and, and I, I'm the father of, of a, of a young girl and, and, uh, you know, have custody of her half the week and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not an ex-con like Scott Lang was, but, but, you know, just that, that story of a father trying to do the best they can by their daughter. And, and, uh, that just that was touching and and I think he played that role to perfection. It's a well done film. It's just a wonderful movie. So I really, you know, appreciated the character when I first saw that film and I followed the character since, you know, again, I'm, you know, Endgame is not part of the MCU as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I stopped at Infinity War. But uh but loved his work in, in Ant-Man and Wasp as well. He's also just a great actor. He was fun to watch in, in Ghostbusters Afterlife and, and the other movies that he's done. Heck, I remember watching him on Friends back in the day when he was Phoebe's husband. Or even on the Super Nintendo commercial before that. I actually remember watching that. But anyway, so that's one thing. That's one criteria to actually play the role well. And and to be genuine in the interviews. Don't come off as a jerk. Don't treat fans like, you know, uh, beneath you or insult people that may not agree with you, this or that or whatever. Never seen him do any of that. But this most recent thing that he did in the news, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. There was a news story that I didn't catch when it first came out. Apparently it went viral, though, somewhat on social media. This middle schooler went home uh, and, he, and it was he. none of his friends would sign his yearbook. Like, he just didn't have any friends. I don't know what the deal was. Maybe he was just kind of socially awkward. You know, I mean, middle school. Come on. It's the worst part of everybody's life. It's horrible. His mother took to social media, apparently, and said something about how her child, you know, uh, no one, you know, just didn't seem to, you know, no, he wanted to sign his yearbook. You know, it was a bummer. He came home pretty upset and stuff. And uh, that, that kind of touches me, too, because I said, you know, my daughter's special needs. She's on the autistic spectrum, and, uh, and she's developmentally much younger. She doesn't really have the capacity right now, I thankfully, to, to understand that people might look at her as different or whatever. And certainly not putting her in public school, so there's that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, you know, that kind of thing, that, that, that will reach out and tug on my heartstrings. So she had put that on social media. Some people responded. I think some of the older kids at the school, you know, started to reach out to him or whatever. But Paul Rudd somehow got wind of it because Paul Rudd was this young boy's favorite superhero. Ant-Man was his favorite superhero. And Paul Rudd arranged to do a FaceTime with the kid. Uh, you know, to do a FaceTime, just a personal FaceTime with him, just talking to this kid, you know, straight up. Um, I think they messaged a couple times or whatever. There's some links or some images of the messages. If you look up the news story, uh, the kid said, thanks, you're my favorite superhero. And Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd responded, well, you're mine. That's just amazing. That's amazing. And then he followed up by sending him an Ant-Man uh, helmet. And he wrote on the helmet with a Sharpie, he said, uh, you know, um, I'm just, I can't wait to see the amazing things that you'll do in life. You know, just, just trying to encourage the kid that you can, you got your whole life ahead of you. You know, you're going to, you're going to be great. You're going to blossom out. You know, all these things are great. That's just wonderful. When you can take that extra, extra step and do things like that for your fans. And you might point to other actors who I, you know, have said aren't really fulfilling this role. Well, well, they did this thing here. Well, anybody can do it as a little publicity thing now and then. But to be that consistent, to be that kind of personality that you would expect that from, and to consistently do things like that, that's great. So applause to Paul Rudd. 
Uh, Ant-Man, his portrayal of Ant-Man is one of my favorite, you know, the modern superheroes. And really good on him for being heroic like that, uh, you know, in real life. So he's, he's a, he's a great exception to this rule. He's really, you know, as, as, as of now, he seems to have really taken the responsibility, uh, seriously of playing a superhero. My second example is a character that I, uh, or as an actor, rather, that I have immense respect for, more so because of his actions than necessarily what his character became. Stephen Amell, who played Oliver Queen on CW's Arrow. I really enjoyed that show when it first came out. Uh, it was obvious they really content the producers really wanted to be telling a Batman story, you know. So they, but CW, our Warner Brothers was still in there. No, no one touches Batman because Chris Nolan they kind of left that hangover thing of no people will get confused if you tell a story on TV different from the movie. Anyway, so they, they it was obvious that they kind of wanted to tell a Batman story. So they ended up doing a Green Arrow, Oliver Queen, you know, very similar stories, uh, you know, somewhat in the comic book anyway, with their outlines and, and general templates there. But uh, they took they drew a lot more from the Batman mythos and uh, made Oliver Queen a, a very serious kind of a darker story. I still thought it was written very well, and Stephen Amell played the the role of Oliver Queen perfectly. I thought, uh, you know, in that series. Now the series did get convoluted when it started crossing over the other series, and eventually the agendas made it into all those CW series, and it went downhill. I certainly stopped watching after a certain point. But Stephen Amell always just stuck in my mind because I would see the things he would do in real life. As uh, as his, in his you know celebrity status you know as, as an actor who has a following, who's known for playing a superhero, known for playing Oliver Queen, and Oliver Queen in that show really was a great example of a cathartic motivational hero, somebody who's got a lot of darkness and demons to deal with, but they really overcome it. You know, like that's an example of a character who learns not to kill, you know, and learns to do this and that, and to try to be better, to try to be you know that's again a cathartic motivational hero can learn that kind of thing. And in his personal life, of course, he's got this campaign, you know, against cancer, you know, trying to help with that. Um, but there's two examples that I want to give. One of them is uh, he was on American Ninja, and I was really impressed. Uh, the American Ninja show, if you, you know, they'll have uh, celebrities come on now and then who try the obstacle course. And, of course, the celebrities, even if they're playing these great heroes, their body's in shape, but they're not to the level that some of the contestants are, you know, uh, stunt people are that can actually roll through that, those obstacle courses. But he was impressing everybody, even the, the host or whatever, and he was doing it for charity. And he got to a point where he was about halfway through and he was hanging there and he knew he couldn't go any farther, but he'd impressed everybody with just how epic he did on a job. And he stopped and said, I'm about to lose. I'm about to drop right now, but I just want you to say, you know, I want you to know. And he called attention to his charity and everything. Really great thing. But this next story is what I'll end with. And this is just really cemented Stephen Amell's place in my mind as somebody I look up to as an actor who portrays superheroes. There's a video clip out there somewhere. I'll try to put it in the description if I can find it. He was at a con, and this was years ago when Arrow was still on air and, and um, in one of its earlier seasons. He was at a con and, and he was answering questions. And if you've ever been to a con, you know, people can you know, stand in line and step up back here to a microphone. And this little girl, she was, you know, in chemotherapy and she was saying how she's a fan of him or whatever. And she was talking to him. And he, at one point, he, he learned that she, she's kind of advanced in the stages of cancer here. And he said, you know what? I want to give you something. Her father was bringing her to the con. He said, I want to give you something. And he took off this necklace that he wore. And, and he, uh, he brought her all down, you know, and he gave her this necklace. He said, I want you to hold this for me and I want you to bring it back to me next year when you come back to this con. I'll be here again and I want you to bring this back to me, but you know, you, you hold it for me for a little while. And the little girl's like, amazing, you know, Oliver Green Arrow's giving me his necklace, you know, and it was amazing. And what he did there, he was in his own little way trying to give that little girl another reason to hang on, another reason to fight, another reason to live another year. You know, not that that's the only reason she'd have, of course, but just that that little gesture was so moving to me. Uh, what did that cost him? Nothing. A little necklace he wore. Gave it to this girl, but that meant the world to her. I mean, she just, you know, I've got to be, I've got to get better because I've got to go back next year to give Oliver Queen his necklace back. You know, that's, ah, oh, that's just, it touches me right now just recounting that story. It's so, it's so wonderful. So um, I've gone on long enough with this, but there are examples out there of, of actors who do take their, their roles as heroes seriously, the roles that they portray as heroes seriously. Um, and good on uh, Paul Rudd and, man, Stephen Amell. He's got a show right now where he's portraying a wrestler or something. I haven't watched it because I'm just not really into wrestling like that, but Al says it's really good, so check that out if you want to support him. But uh, good on to those individuals. I'll be back for more of this series. 
Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories and supporting the real heroes you know and love. Thanks.